A lot of people ask me what's the meaning of Brown Rice, uh, Brown Rice ENT, Brown Rice Entertainment. And uh, Brown Rice, the idea, the name came to me years ago in the 90s when I first started my independent label. I've always been health conscious. I wanted to bring something that was nutritional, mentally, spiritually. And uh, that's when the name came. Black, real, original, wise, Nubians reversing ignorance, commanding elevation. As years went on, I thought about the universal appeal I wanted to have for my label. And then the dual meaning of Brown Rice is be real, original, wise, new, reverse ignorance, command, elevation. And the reason why I went with that is because it's for everyone. It's inclusive, you know, for black, white, Indian, Asian, you know, whatever you are, you know. If you're down for the cause, if you're down for making a change, you're my brother. The reason why I started Brown Rice TV is because I saw a void of conscious material when it came to hip hop based shows. And, I, and I, I felt like, you know, it's a real need for it. When you look around our community, you see a bunch of poverty. You see black on black crime at an all time high. You see illiteracy, obesity, you know, all the things that, that we should have overcome. We're dealing with them like never before. But yet, when you listen to rappers on some of these shows and, 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 the, and the subject matters on these internet based shows, all you hear about conversations that really don't have, have really no deeper meaning when it comes to what's, what we're really dealing with in our communities. So I want to create an environment or, or, or a platform for uh, conscious and critical thinkers where we can come and share our views and talk about things that bother us, things that we feel, things we're thinking about from a hip hop artist perspective. There's a lot of hip hop artists, there's a lot of artists in general that really care about the community, that really care about the kind of messages that they're putting out there and how it's affecting the youth and how it's affecting our community as a whole. But we don't have camaraderie when it comes to those artists. You know, we tend to be divided. You know, we're off on our own little islands, but we need to have a platform where we can all come together and, and be a single voice. Like never before, we gotta challenge all these stereotypes that are being projected through the media and through us in hip hop. I put the blame on us more than anybody else because we should know better. They pay us a little bit of money and we, and we sell out. And we sell out our people every day, all day long. You know, I wanna fight against them, man. I can't sit back on the sidelines and just watch buffoonery and clowns represent me as a black man and represent me as an artist. When America thinks of a hip hop artist, what they tend to think of is the most dumbed down, ignorant, irresponsible type of human being that you can imagine. And to me, that needs to change because it's way too many intelligent, critical thinking brothers out there that are in hip hop. We need to become the majority because our kids are dying, our communities are in an uproar, the poverty is getting worse and worse, and opportunities less and less, and yet we're not feeding the minds of the young that are coming up with anything that's conscious that's gonna help them defeat this onslaught that's on its way. You know, it's literally like a, a avalanche coming, and we're sitting idle. And, and unless we all become active and vocal like never before, we're gonna be responsible for that next generation that we're already seeing the effects of what the music has created. What you hear on a daily basis, what you say on a daily basis is what you become. Whether you want to accept it, admit it or not. And it needs to change. I think every youngster should ask himself a question when he listening to rap music. If your favorite rapper is telling you to sell dope in the trap, rob, steal, murder, disrespect your mama, your sister, your nephew, your cousins, your aunties, why are you supporting that rapper? Why are you praising that rapper? Why are you putting that rapper on the pedestal? When all he's telling you is to destroy yourself. But he's your favorite rapper. He's the one you talk about, brag about, and his whole mission is to destroy you. Think about that. Mind of a revolutionary. 
in isolated rooms my ancestors visit and speak to me Telling me to fight, so fight is what I must do I'm calling out Jay-Z, Kanye, whole cash money crew Rick Ross, GZP, Diddy 2 YG, 2 Chainz, Trinidad James Rich Homie, Kwan, Soldier Boy, and the game At the end of the day, I want to make a difference through my music I want to make a difference through my words, through my actions I made a conscious decision in my life right now that there's no time to be a hypocrite. There's no time for double talk. There's no time to just talk in general. You know, everything I say, I want to already be in action, make it happen. You know, we're at a critical time. You know, people are dying. Kids are, are, are being brainwashed by this American media, painting a picture of young black and male Latinos as criminals, thugs, dumb, oversexed. And unfortunately, a lot of it is true. We're living up to those stereotypes. And whenever someone challenges it, they're looked at as an Uncle Tom, or soft, or this brother's tripping. No, you're tripping. And we need to make that known. We need to, we need to make it known that we're upside down. Our thinking is backwards. We're praising what's evil, and we're turning our back on what's good. How can we really complain about racism and all these things that are attacking us on a daily basis if we're not taking responsibility for what's happening in our own community? We gotta change ourselves before we change anybody else. And that's what my music is talking about. It's just the truth, man. We got work to do. Just look around you. It's not like I'm telling you anything that's revolutionary. I'm telling you what you already know. We can't afford to be passive in this day and age. We gotta be urgent. Because that's the only thing we're gonna, that's the only way we're gonna change it. I wanna be a, a voice that's encouraging that behavior. I wanna see our young kids you know, and, and, uh, get better grades in school so they can get better jobs so they have financial security. This system is not designed for us to succeed. Empower yourself with history first, always, but know the tricks of their trade. You know, we have to be 100 times better than, than, than the people that are trying to oppress us. And so, if that's the case, why are we wasting our time tap dancing and performing like buffoons and coons? When we got a whole nother uh, enemy out there that wants to see us incarcerated in an early grave, in poverty, and subservient to everything that they're putting out there. And we're just selling out and buying right into it. You know, and the music that we're listening to is doing nothing but encouraging you to make that choice. And I'm trying to tell you, don't make that choice. It amazes me how many young cats are impressed by these so-called gangsters, gangbangers. If you're a true gangster, you'd be starting up a revolution, you'd be banging for the cause. You know, because that's the kind of gangsters I want to be like. Our history is too rich for you youngsters to be following wannabes. When OGs died, true OG gangsters died and left blueprints that you can truly follow. The Malcolm X's, the Martin Luther King's, the Huey Newton's, the H. Rap Brown's, the Bunchy Carter's, the, the Marcus Garvey's. These are gangsters. They fought against the system. They fought against oppression. They fought against white supremacy. They fought against everything that's trying to destroy us. Those are gangsters. There's a plethora of, of, of black leaders that, that rolled for the cause, rolled for your freedom, rolled for justice and equality and to fight the system that was trying to destroy you and I. Imagine if our community had thousands of little Malcolm X's running around, thousands of little Martin Luther King's running around. Now imagine what that would be like. You know, instead of these so-called gangsters with their ass showing, advertising booty, you know, talking about the most buffoonish subject matters, you know, and this is a this is our attention span is on this, while our communities are dying, kids are being killed on a daily basis, drugs is flooding our community, but yet we wanna praise and admire wannabe gangsters. Does that make any common sense to you? It's such a lacking of leadership. You know, so I feel for kids, I feel for where they are and what they what they're up against, because I, I I can only imagine coming up in that type of chaos and, and, and not having any voices giving you an alternative. That breaks my heart, man. I, I cry, man, when I watch young black boys killing each other, man, all over the country, being murdered, shot down, and it's just, and it's, it's become such a norm. And we, and we become so desensitized to death. It's just, it hurts, it breaks my heart, man. And that is what fuels me, because I told myself, I want to change the things that make me cry. Don't think that you can't do something right there where you are. If you affect one person, you know, you might, you might affect the one person that can change the entire world. Never underestimate the power of affecting one person. 
We have so much potential, man. We're the sleeping giant, but it's time for us to wake up. And we've had too much of a history of greatness to be where we are today. Yeah, of course, there's a lot of successful, powerful black people doing amazing things, but that doesn't translate to the masses of black people. We are too smart. We are too resilient for that. And we should never accept that. You can't demand respect if you don't respect yourself. And not hating one another and, and pulling each other down, crabs in the, in the bucket. You know, let, let's put an end to the Willie Lynch speech. You know, let, let, let's, let's make that, that speech irrelevant. It's time for us to think for ourselves and to be on another page, a page of, of, of self-reliance, a page of, of unification, a page of consciousness on every aspect of our lives. They say the best place to hide something from a black person is in a book. And that right there is a joke that I really hate with a passion because it's so true. We gotta pick up them books, man. And when they say knowledge is power, that might sound corny, but that's, that's real spit. I wanna tell young cats, take care of yourself, man. Watch what you eat, watch what you put in, your, in the temple. You know, we have to promote positive behavior. You know, we have to be disciplined. It's a, it's, 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 a, it's a lifestyle. We have to come back to greatness. Let's be champions. I hate racism, man. I hate racism with a passion. But honestly, I'm not focused on racism. You know, it, to me, it's, it's real hard for me to focus on racism when I see us killing each other more than the KKK ever killed us. To all you white people out there, that are tired of hearing about racism, you need to get in a fight and try to change racism because racism is real and it's alive. It's easy for you to tell us to forget about the past, forget about what we've been through when you haven't been through it. To me, the biggest issue with racism continuing to this day is white people not accepting the fact that they are, they are beneficiaries of racism, whether they're racist or not. Because you don't have the same dilemmas I have. You don't have to be looked at and, 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 and treated a certain way on a daily basis as a black male. This is real. So the only way that's gonna change is if black and white people have honest dialogue and address the obvious elephant in the room. And that's what's wrong with America. America doesn't wanna address the elephant in the room. America should be amazed and astonished at black people's progress in society. When you really look at what we've been able to accomplish under our circumstances, it is amazing. And put yourself in the shoes that we've had to walk in and, 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 and see some of the great accomplishments some of our people have made and contributed to, to, to society as a whole and invented inventions that have benefited all of us as a whole that never got credit. They're not in the history books. We don't learn about this stuff. Why don't we learn about this type of stuff? Because this is not the agenda of this, of this country to, to, to tell the true story. So who's gonna tell our true story? Us. We gotta get in the know. We gotta have critical conversation. We have to talk about the things that make us uncomfortable. Because if we're comfortable, that means we're not growing. When you talk about things that are uncomfortable, you're forced to examine yourself. You're forced to look deep within and say, you know what, he or she is right. I do need to make some adjustments and some changes. And like never before, we all need to look in the mirror and we need to acknowledge what we've been doing wrong and make some clear changes because the world is waiting for us to, to, to show up. Because when black people show up, things change. Brown Rice TV.